Well, I'm back. I'm back. Yes, uh, I'm doing species ID once again. I did a whole pile during the pandemic lockdown during COVID for my students uh, because, well, they couldn't go in the classroom. And that was great. Worked really well. well. It didn't work as well as being in the woods with them, to be quite honest. But it worked. We got through it. Uh, but yeah, um, they need to catch up on a few things bef uh, before the end of the semester. We've got three weeks left. And I had most of it online for them, but I didn't have this one. And it's uh, a bird species that are similar and how to identify the difference. So I thought, hey, I'll just put it online again, like I did in the old days. And then I thought I would share it with you and then have a test. There's going to be a test at the end. So these are bird species that are similar. What are the differences? Get ready. Get ready. I'd, I'd be nervous. It's a tough test. It's tough. Okay, let's start with the, the gulls. There's not no such thing as a seagull, okay, or a poop gull as my students would call them. There's a whole bunch of different gulls and you have to know the differences if you're going to be professional in this field. So yeah, um, and also by the way, if you were a baseball player and you maliciously hit a gull with a baseball, um, that's illegal because they're protected under the Migratory Birds Act. If you do it by accident, oops, you know that's not good. But if you do it on purpose, they're not poops of the sky, they're actually protected by law. So don't do it because you can get jail time, all right? Anyway, we got gulls, uh, two main gulls we have in Ontario, ringbill gull, herring gull. I'll start with the herring gull on the right. It's kind of cool because the herring gull, it, it, you know, they, it looks like the ringbill gull, even though it's a little bit more puffy, bigger. But yeah, by looks of the bill, uh, it does not have the ring bill around the, uh, the, the bill. It actually has a red spot. And actually, the, the 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 young of the herring gull will hit the the parent's red um, spot, and then it will vomit up the food for the babies to eat. So herring gull, uh, look for the red spot under the bill. Ringbill gulls, it has a black ring around the bill. So these gulls will hang around together, uh, but there are some differences. And I I would say the ringbill gull's tail is a little bit longer. Uh, herring gull is a little bit more fluffier but it's just look for that bill. In flight, good luck. <laughs> I don't know. They all look like poop hops to me. I uh, forgot one important thing. So the ringbill gulls' legs are yellow. Herring gulls are not yellow. They're pinkish. Crows versus ravens. Yeah, there's, man, I, I even took notes for this because like, oh, here's a lot of my ravens. Here we go. All right. I don't need the notes. First of all, let's look at the size. Uh, crows are a lot smaller than ravens. But if you don't see them side by side, how would you know? But really, a raven is a lot bigger than a crow. The bill of a crow versus raven, the ravens have a chisel-like beak, like real strong chisel. They even have a little bit of a mustache going on here and a little bit of a beard going on down here where the crows don't. And uh, crows, yeah, a lot smaller. But it's the tail. So the tail of a crow, it, especially in flight, because that helps in flight, there's more square shaped where ravens are chisel shaped, like a ch chisel where you would hit wood at, with, with, with that, right? So that there's a difference there. Even the feet themselves. I mean, the ravens have like claws where crows just have little feet. The, uh, well, the call too, which um, we, we had another class on the calls, but just to remind everybody, the, the crow goes, caw, 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 where the raven goes, croak, croak, croak. Big difference when you hear them, right? When you see them in flight, crows will gather. Uh, uh, well, ravens, you'll, you'll see one or two. You won't see them gather. Ravens will use a thermal uh, in the air to soar, where crows will just flap around. They hate each other. The crows will go nuts after a, a raven or two, where vice versa, ravens will go after the, the crow. Ravens are more northerly uh, birds in here in Ontario, where I am. So more of Algonquin, actually more Thunder Bay, Lake Superior, except when they're migrating. So we'll, you'll see them here in the spring where crows are more southerly. And yeah, the crows in groups, ravens not. Here's a great thing that uh, First Nations told me years ago. If you see a bunch of crows and they're uneven numbers, like three, seven, that's good because they actually hunt in triangulation. They wash out for each other, which is why they're odd numbers. If you see them in uh, common numbers, like two, four, six, eight, then something bad is going to happen to you. It's like bad luck, supposedly. I wish I didn't know that, but look up and I was like, see six. 
get worried. Uh, okay, the one cool thing about uh, ravens is they're a better dancer than crows. So they skip, 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 skip. Uh, I don't know why they do that. I think it's kind of fun watching them. They always do that. Crows, they just walk. Uh, what else? They got many cops going on. Oh, yeah. We're going to, going to be, oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. Got it. Okay. Crows versus ravens. And they're both very intelligent birds, extremely intelligent. When I banded birds and we studied uh, these birds, we couldn't study them that much because we couldn't catch them because they're way too smart. We never, the 13 years I actually banded birds, we could never catch a crow or a raven. They're too intelligent. I actually wa watched a, a crow once get a straw or a, a, a sedge, put it down an ant's hill like that, and then wait, and all the ants would gather on it, pick it up, and then, yeah, amazing, amazing birds. Okay, starling, common grackle. You could think, I forget who it was, but it was a gentleman uh, that thought that all the birds that were in Shakespeare's plays should be released in New York from Europe. <laughs> so one was the uh, European starling. And in 1890, so that's that's why we had them. And they're not really pleasant to other birds. Like they still nest, they they eat baby birds, but they're very colorful. Uh, the key characteristic of them compared to the grackle, uh, which actually are also not nice birds to other birds, by the way. The starling has a yellow beak. Uh, it's got pink feet. You look over at the grackle, it's got a black beak, black feet, and also has a golden eye. OK, they're both metallic. I call it metallic. They both, both are shiny. They're very colorful birds, actually, especially where the sun hits them. The starling, though, has intermittent, intermittent um, colors uh, in its wing pattern and in its breast, where grackles have a shiny head and somewhat shiny body. The big thing in flight, though, is the grackle has a very long tail compared to the starling. OK, so ex extended tail for sure. In fact, it even looks like a like a um, like a mini Merlin flying through the air because of that. The starling also is a good mimicker. I think it can mimic up to over 20 other birds around it. And it will learn that while it sits there. It's, in, it's incredible why, why it does that. Why it does that, I don't know. Uh, there's a whole bunch of hypothesis for that, but it is a really good mimicker. So when you're hearing the call, what's the call of the, of the starling? Eh, well, there is some specific call, but it's all over the place. Common grackles, though, will come into your, your yard and eat everything, uh, find any bird in the nest, kill them all, and then fly off and move on. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just, it's like, what the? The only other bird you'll get these guys confused with, or these birds confused with, are red-winged blackbirds, uh, the male, not the female. The female looks like a over overgrown um sparrow uh but the red winged blackbird male is black it, it does have the wing but when uh or the wing pattern sorry the red and uh, yellow wing pattern but when they're not challenging for a nesting area they'll save energy by by holding that or, or, or disguising that or or not showing it and uh so they they could get confused blackbirds uh red winged blackbirds a little bit smaller more vocal at, at times and, and also especially in the spring and kind of different habitat. Red winged blackbirds will be hanging around the cattails. They're casting over the wetlands because they mate with more than one female and they fight for territory for that. However, you will see them at the feeder. You'll see both, all three of these at the feeder, but the red winged blackbird doesn't have that glossy shine to it. I think that's the big in indicator when you see them. Gross, it's a very gross bird. Uh, yeah, so rough grouse, first of all, look at habitat. They're more than a southerly bird. So you'll see them in southern Ontario up to Algonquin in, here in Ontario. You won't see a spruce grouse in southern Ontario. They're more of a boreal forest. Uh, and actually, they're not as good as tasting as the rough grouse because of that. They eat just conifers all the time. So they have a really, um, well, you'd eat them, but they have a harsh taste to them. But really cool. Look, look at the tail pattern of the rough grouse. It's got that black pattern with the white trim on the tail and they also have that black hoodie that they show off well during the mating and they also have the feathers down the legs okay and both of them go on to a stump uh, to mate uh, to call for mate they'll actually go like this and the the wind going under the wings will make this noise so it's not them calling it's actually the wings doing that the lashi in the wintertime 
dive into the snow if it's going to be a cold night to uh, entune themselves to keep warm. And sometimes it will freeze over and they'll be entombed. <laughs> and so you'd be walking across the snow in your snowshoes and you'll open a pocket of a, a, a grouse or two and they'll fly up ahead of you and scare the living jumping out of you. The spruce grouse, yeah, that red um, eye pattern on, on the eye is a giveaway, but that, that's that's a male that has that. The female doesn't have that. But So look for the tail. It has a golden yellow trim with no white trim to it. So the tail is totally different. It also doesn't have that fluffy neck. And it also has a more uh, multicolored chest, like, like a brownish white flex, okay? And again, not as much feathers down the leg. Oh, the purple finch and the house finch. Everybody gets this confused. I get this confused. Let me have a cup of tea first. Oh. Oh. You gotta like the golden curls. Okay, the house finch is a lot more common to see at your bird feeder. Uh, they're used to be at the bird feeder. They also have a bigger bill. It's hard to see. Uh, but just to note, the purple finch, even though it's not purple, it's more reddish. Well, it's kind of purplish. Yeah, it's more colorful. has more of a broader bring, even though their, their bills are still made for crushing seeds. They're still the same. They're actually a lot more purple or reddish than the house finch and less common. They also have a little bit of a mohawk, especially the uh, the male. And yeah, if you think you have a purple finch on your feeder, I'm pretty sure it's probably a house finch and you're getting too excited about things. Oh yeah, the downy woodpecker and the hairy woodpecker. They can both live in the same habitat because the downy is smaller than the hairy. That's the big thing. Uh, that's the differences, right? Both males have a red patch on the, on the back of the head. Uh, females do not, but it's size. There's a slight differences as well, but but the downy will go to a tree and start pecking at the tree to get the grubs. And what it does is it's like a yo-yo. Its tongue is wrapped up in its skull and they will bang, bang, bang. And it has a, a very hard calcium deposit on its forehead. So it doesn't get a headache doing this all the time. And then when, when it makes the hole, it's like a yo-yo will wrap its, its tongue into the hole and wrap it up again. So the, the hairy does the same thing. It's just a, a slightly bigger bird. The downy also, the tail is slightly different than the hairy. You won't be able to see this in flight really, but if you look at it really closely, the side trim of the white feathers on the downy is not completely white as uh, black specks on it, or, or it's, I wouldn't call them specks, I'd call them flex or something like that. But anyway, it's not completely white where the hairy doesn't have that. I got to say, though, the only way you're going to see the difference is the size and get used to the size. Spend a lot, a lot of bush time looking at both. And um, I, there, there's the one um, screen to the right. They're both together. And look at the difference. You got a downy to the left, hairy to the right. I do think, even though both have it, they have a little tiny blondish patch on top of their beak. The hairy... That's more prominent, I found, than in, in the downy. The nuthatch. Chickadees and nuthatches both can go upside down to feed. And therefore, when you catch them to ban them, and you put them upside down, their brains function fine, just like a chickadee. All other birds that I know of, if you put them upside down, the brain does not function. You just go, oh, and that's great. So when you catch a nuthatch or a chickadee in the, in the mist net to put a band on it, it will bite you so badly. So similar habitat, um, uh, they will both also chase, not chase, sorry, follow the chickadee because the chickadee does a really good call to tell all the other birds in the area that a predator is around. The, the nuthatch has no ability to do that. So it will follow the chickadees and watch the chickadees. So they're buddies. Easy, um, white-breasted nuthatch has a white breast, okay? Red-breasted nuthatch has a reddish tone breast, but also it has a marker across, it, across its eye, an eye pattern, okay? I find the red breast and nuthatch too also has a longer bill. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I, I just find that. But yeah, the breast will, is a giveaway for sure. And both call, uh, they sound like, uh, well, they sound like my three sisters at Christmas. It, it's a laughter, it's a laughter you, you hear. And I find that the, what, the white breasted lasts more out of control than the red breasted. Yeah, why am I showing blue jay and Canada jay? They look completely different, but people get them confused. And we need to talk about these two. So the blue jay, really intelligent bird, is a mimicking bird too. It will stand above a red tailed hawk and call off a red tailed hawk's voice. 
So all the other birds around think there's a red-tailed hawk around. The red-tailed hawk will look at it like, hey, what's your problem? Um, they're very secretive in the nest. You can walk, walk right uh, below a, a nest and they will not do anything. But when you enter the forest, they'll call off to everybody that you have entered the forest. They're not absolutely blue, to, to be quite honest. There's a study done where the metallic um, uh, shine of them, if, if a true light hits them, they're actually black. Who cares? Um, Canada Jay, Whiskey Jack, Camp Robbers, very intelligent bird. And they do not look like the blue jay at all, but they are a jay. And I love them to bits. They are Canada's bird. I'm not sure why they didn't choose the loon. I would have chose the loon, but they chose the Canada jay just a few, a few years ago. And um, there's a bit of a problem with these guys. Uh, yeah, all the campers, especially in Gokwe, know them. They'll come down and steal your food, right? Uh, and Or if you put your food up in your hand, they'll come and grab it. A uh, great scene where uh, Bill Mason, Water Walker, uh, he's you know camped at a campsite and they they come down and, and grab his cheese. I love that scene. But what they do uh, prior to winter is they'll grab as much food as possible, go to a tree and spit on it, and then put it in between the bark. And that will actually hold it fresh throughout the winter. But because their winter is getting uh, warmer, that is now getting rotten. So they figure that out and said, hey, my food storage is, is ruined. So yes, in Algonquin Park, there's not as many can of J's as there once was, but they're moving north. So where it's colder, they can, they can do that process. Great Blue Heron and Sandhill Crane. Totally different birds. Uh, great blue heron do not travel in groups. Sandhill cranes do, so you'll six, see six or seven of them. Great blue herons they'll they'll pair up in the springtime, but in the summer they're solitary, and um, they look completely different. So why am I even covering this? But in flight they look similar. They really do. So uh, if you look at them in close, I mean, lo looking up close, uh, the, the great blue heron has this sort of nice hairdo coming back like that, a really nice hairdo. Uh, whereas the sandhill crane has a red patch on, on, on its forehead. They, um, yeah, the wing pan panders is slightly different, but it's the neck. So great blue herons, even in flight, have a heavier head and heavier neck. So it's in a U shape when they're in flight, whereas the sandhill crane does not, and their neck is, is, is straight. Interesting thing, there's so many sandhill cranes now in Ontario that the government's thinking of opening them up for hunting uh, next year. And this is 2024 when I'm doing this. I don't know what a sandhill crane tastes like, but I, I do know that when I started in fish and wildlife, they were really, really uncommon birds. So it's a good thing that we're getting more. Uh, the habitat is totally different. Great blue herons, you'll see them along swamp areas, along the lakeshore areas where sandhill cranes will be in a field, a cornfield or, or sedge areas, like a flooded area with sedge. And um, yeah, uh, totally different habitat and look for the neck. Last one, sparrows. Man, sparrows are tough. Another sip of tea. Hey, sparrows are tough. Two that looks pretty close, house sparrow, shipping sparrow. House sparrow, probably most, more common around your house because they're house sparrows. But yeah, they both have a rusty patch on them. So if you look at them, uh, both have a rusty patch on the top of them. And um, the chipping sparrow is more, what's it called, what's it called, what's it called, uh, more uh, chestnut, more chestnut color, where housing sparrow is a little bit more off color. Also, a house sparrow has eyeliner. Look at the chipping sparrow. It just has a black line uh, along uh, from the eye back to the back of the skull. The house sparrow does not have that black line. It has a brown line, but it does not have the black line, okay? And oh, and the chipping sparrow, really prominent up close, has a very dark bill. House sparrow has dark at the top and blondish on the bottom. So you look at the two, they are different. You'll see them around together, but there are some differences. Oh, and the chipping sparrow is smaller than the house sparrow, but it's like the Harry and Downey Woodpecker, you would only know that if they're standing beside each other, okay? So once again, look for the eye pattern. I think that's the key difference, to be quite honest, is the eye pattern. The house sparrow has white eyeliner with a brown strip along, along the, uh, the side of the eye to the back, and the chipping sparrow has black. All right, that's it. Get ready for the test. Ready? I'd be nervous. It's a tough test.
Yeah, so get ready for these birds that look similar, but are not. Good luck. All right, everybody's ready. Let the test begin. Number one, is this a blue jay or a gray jay or whiskey jack or Canada jay? Number two, is number three a crow or a raven? Or is number four a crow or a raven? Remember, one's bigger than the other. One has more of a mustache and a beard than the other. Hmm. Number five and six, is number five a great blue heron or a sandhill crane? Or is number six a great blue heron or a sandhill crane? Look at the throat, look at the neck. Which one is youped? Youped. <laughs> which one is shaped like a U? And which one is outstretched? Number seven and eight, both are nut hatches. Which one is the white breasted nut hatch and which one is the red breasted nut hatch? That should be easy. Look at this breast. Number nine and 10, one is a chipping sparrow and one is a house sparrow. So remember the house sparrow has a white um, ringlet around the eye and a brown streak uh, on the back of its, uh, from his eye to his back of his head. And the chipping sparrow has black with no eyeliner. Number 11 and 12, starling or common grackle. Common grackle has a ring around its eye, a golden ring, has black legs, has a black bill. Starling has a yellow bill, no black legs. Both kind of metallic, shiny color. But a little bit different in that the the uh, grackle has more of a head shine to it. Sterling is shiny all the way through. Number thirteen to fourteen, which grouse is thirteen? A uh, spruce grouse, more more of boreal forest northern species, or is it a rough grouse that's more in the south? I would say don't look for the red eye patch because females don't have the red eye patch. Look at the tail. Which one has the black rim and what? which one has the golden rim? That's the difference. Yeah, this is a difficult one. Which is the uh, purple finch? Which is the house finch? The house finch is more common. It's less purplish red, whereas the uh, purple finch is more purplish red. And yeah, I think I just gave that one away. The hairy or downy woodpecker, one smaller than the other. Okay, I'll tell you right now, the downy is smaller than the hairy. Good luck on that one. Number 19 and 20, the last ones, um, The uh, it's uh, either a uh, herring gull or ring bill gull. I gotta say, just look at them. Which one has the ring around the bill? Which would be the ring bill gull? And what has the red blotch underneath the bill where the babies hit it so it can vomit up? And they're not seagulls. Don't ever call them seagulls. You're a professional now. You've graduated from this class. Uh, you are you don't call um, uh, sunfish sunfish. They're either uh, bluegill or pumpkin seed, right? And walleye is not, not um, a pickerel, that sort of thing. We've graduated beyond that. We're professionals. Okay, good luck. Uh, send me your score. And hopefully I do more of these beyond my class. I finish in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I think I might progress in doing this uh, beyond.